is Wade Williams, and I'm a, an aging actor from New York to Los Angeles. Now here I am at uh, Argentum Photo Lab. <laughs> uh, when did you get started acting? Uh, the first thing I ever did was in high school. I did, uh, I think it was Kiss Me Kate in high school, a high school musical. Then I didn't really do it till I got into college. And uh, I started really acting in, seriously in college when I was 24 and uh, got into the theater program there at the University of Tulsa and graduated with a theater degree from the University of Tulsa. And I thought, what am I going to do with that? <laughs> and I get a job, <laughs> especially in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, there's not a lot of professional acting going on in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, so uh, I, got, I ended up getting uh, into Rutgers University into their graduate program at Mason Grove School of the Arts. And I studied with a guy named Bill Esper for four years, well actually three years uh, at, at Rutgers and got a master's degree, an MFA in acting performance from Rutgers. And then I thought, well, what am I gonna do with this? I hope I can get a job. <laughs> and, to be a reoccurring thing. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, I moved into New York and um, I, to be honest with you, I haven't stopped working ever since. So I went to New York. I was in New York for about 10 years, and I did a bunch of shows at the, uh, the Public Theater, uh, a couple of shows at the uh, Delacorte Theater in uh, Central Park, Taming of the Shrew, and um, uh, Richard III with, with Denzel Washington. That was fun. And uh, Taming the Shrew with Morgan Freeman and Tracy Ullman. That was fun, too. And then uh, and Helen Hunt was in that as well. This was before she was a big star. Do you pick up anything from any of those guys? Oh yeah, man! Just the, how many ideas they have. They're just fonts of ideas. Just ideas just flow out of them. The different ways to do stuff, different ways to say things, different ways of approaching the things. Uh, they're just idea machines. And that's what you have to be as an actor. Do you find it uh, like doing a, a stage play like that with with you know? Uh, those type of people, and then doing like st uh, screen or film, do they? Do you find that they approach it differently, or, or do you even approach it differently, like from stage to screen? Yeah, is uh, acting on the stage and acting on, for a film and television is a completely different thing. It's a different style, a different uh, reality. Um, you know, what's your frame there? Right, about like this, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, see, uh, the frame on a theater piece is the whole proscenium arch of the theater. Sure. So you're, you know, about this big on the, on the stage. So you can afford to be a little bigger in terms of your physicality and your voice and, you know, uh, uh, and a gesture on the stage like this is not a very big gesture, whereas uh, a gesture on the screen like this is pretty big, you know. Sure. So it's, it depends on... It's, it's completely different in a way, but then also it's the same because it's still acting. It's still, uh, you know, exploring the character and really acting, really responding, really listening to other people on the stage with you. So you have a real truthful dialogue um, within the text. So you're improvising on the text to bring the text to life with another actor. And you can do that both on the screen and also on the stage. Did you find that there was a, for you, a big learning curve between transferring from like the New York stage to when you did make the move out to LA? Um, uh, I was really lucky because I kind of understood that on the on the screen you have to bring things in, you have to you have to. Br you don't need to show them like you do in the theater. You don't have to, uh, well, in, in, in theater you have to let people come to you as well, but especially on film and television, if people should come to you, they should lean into the screen as opposed to you leaning out trying to get attention. Um, so uh, I figured that out pretty early on, but that's one of the main differences uh, between theater acting and film and television acting. I also did a lot of musical theater acting. I did. Um, two shows on Broadway, Les Mis and Guys and Dolls. And then oh, I yeah? did three big Broadway tours, um, Kiss of the Spider Woman, and then uh, with Tita Rivera, and then uh, I did uh, Showboat, 
big, huge production of Showboat, and then a show called Ragtime that was out here at the Schubert Theater about 10, 15 years ago. And uh, that's when I stopped doing it, and I moved to L.A. after Ragtime. But it's, it's a different, sure. it's a, even musical theater, to singing, to sing on stage is a whole different reality than, you know, speaking. Which production of Ragtime did you do? Did you do the original Broadway production? No, I did it one before Broadway. It was oh, okay. out here at, uh, at the Schubert Theater. Okay. A lot of people that were in that production went to Broadway. Nice. But I stayed here. Um, Los Angeles. What was uh, your first big credit for like film or television? The first big thing I got was a HBO movie called Route 9. And it had Kyle McLaughlin, Peter Coyote, Amy Locaine, who else? Miguel Sandoval. Um, There's pretty cool fe- people in it. And I, I played the lead opposite Kyle McLaughlin. That was my very first movie gig called Route 9. Look it up. It's on HBO all the time. And did you, uh, was that just like through auditions or did they have I just went in. I just went in and auditioned. Uh, I went to the uh, casting director and auditioned first. And I got a call back for the director. And I read it one time and left the room. And the next thing I knew, I had a phone call saying you got a job. Seems pretty rare. It's pretty cool. It happens. Yeah. It happens a lot. I know, you know a lot of people that have a story like that. Yeah? Sure. Well, my audition technique, I can tell you what it is. Um, I get the sides, usually the night before, and if I get the script, I uh, breeze through the script and get the sense of what the scene's about and the whole, what the whole scenario is mm-hmm. about. And then I start working on the scenes, one at a time, and I get them in my head to where I understand the arc of the scene, you know, where, you know, because every scene has to have a beginning, middle, and an end, or it just doesn't work. If you just flat all the way through and mm-hmm. you don't change, see, drama is about a change through time and your audition is it should be drama you, sh- you should have change through time in each of your audition pieces but if you have a, like say three scenes um, you should you should weave them together because you're going to read them in the in the audition like they're going to be one scene like it's going to show the whole arc of your character through whatever piece you're auditioning for be it a TV show or a movie so you want to give it an arc, you want to say, okay, if I'm going to be angry at the end, I want to start happy at the beginning. I mean, simple as that. That's a really good trick. It's a really good trick. Even if you don't necessarily understand what they want, don't worry about it. Just make yourself change. Make your, and find in the script the places where your character would change. Somebody would say something to you or you receive some information that would affect you. That's the impetus to change. So you want to change through your, throughout your audition performance. Once I get that down, so I know what the arc of the scene is, then I start memorizing it. And I memorize it by first saying it in my head till I can, I can say it over and over to put myself in my head, all the lines, blocking the ones out. I don't memorize what I'm, my, uh, the other character's lines, just mine. Um, and I, then I write it down. I memorize them in my head and then I write them down two or three times sometimes to where I get them totally sunk in my brain. And it usually takes me overnight. I have to sleep on them. And then the next morning when I get up, I got them. But uh, it's hard. I, I'm not very good anymore at doing the same day, uh, memorizing something. I'm just, my brain just can't do it anymore. But if you give me a night to, uh, to work on it, then the next day I go in and I give, a, uh, like I say, a well-prepared, well-rehearsed audition. And if I do what I rehearsed, then, I, it's a, uh, then I've, I've done a great audition. And if I get the job, who cares? Because um, you never know why you get a job. You never know why you don't. So, um, I, I, but, I, but you got to give the well-prepared, well-rehearsed audition. And to me, that means memorized performance. A performance because especially in film and television they don't have time to direct you into a character you know in the theater you got like eight weeks to learn a part and you can get directed into it and try stuff and do it but not in film and television a lot of times you start working the next day after you got hired and uh, you're in there and they're too much they're too worried about you know setting the lights up and getting the day rolling and they don't want to have to sit around and direct you into a performance so you have to have it and then you, then you get the job. And if you don't get the job, they'll remember you and you get the next one. 